Hi, it's Matt here from pilotpracticeexams.com where you can pass in half the time. So let me get into some of the research and show you how you can apply this in passing your exams. Now it's really important that you understand that this is like some of the best uh, science in the history of education. Now Edgar Dale's memory um, or cone of experience as it's known was, um, it's been rebuked in recent times, but it still has massive implications for the way we study. And in fact, there's a lot of the world's best uh, educational institutions that still very much teach this to their students, how to study. So basically, most people would have heard of this, so let me just race through it and then teach you how it applies to your study. So if you read something, he says you retain 10%. If you hear something, 20%. If you see something, 30%. If you see and hear, you retain 50%. If you say it and write it, you'll retain 70%. If you do it, you'll retain 90%. Now, modern research has actually proven that those percentages are out a bit, and if you, even just by looking at them, you know, you can tell that they're not, they haven't, they're not scientifically accurate, but they are roughly a good guide, okay? Now, if we apply that to what you need to do to pass, let's have a look at a problem that presents itself and therefore a way you need to study as a result. So if for example you do forget 90% um, of what you read and you only try and, because I get students tell me all the time, I, I need to learn how to remember the whole textbook when I read it. And my answer is, don't. What are you doing that for? It doesn't work. Okay? So let me show you why and then we'll explain how you should read the textbook later. Okay, so the first thing is this, if you read 100% of the textbook, you're going to retain 10%. Then you read 100% of the textbook again, now you've retained 20%, then you retain 30, 40. We work our way up. There's the pass mark, you need to retain 80% of the textbook. So to have a bit of a margin, you need to read through it nine times. Now here's the problem. If the section you have to read is 300 pages, you got 300 pages and you remember 30. 600, you remember 60. 900, you remember 90. Okay, 1,200 pages, you remember 120. Now this is assuming you're repeating the same 300 pages, okay? So to get to the point where you're going to pass and retain 270 of those 300 pages, you have to read 2,700 pages. Now that presents a problem when we try and apply that in real life. Most people work, have jobs, family, etc. And they just have other things in their life. And the problem is, every time we study, if we leave a gap, we lose more and more memory and that's the second part of this study that I'm going to show you in a sec. Okay, so the problem is, is if you say you have three or four really good days and you study and you go 300, 600, you get to there and then you have a couple of days off, the problem is you're not restarting at that point. You might be restarting there or there depending on how much time you have off. So you're fighting this constant battle of workload versus memory versus reality. And it just doesn't work. And we know the statistics because in the industry, 34% of people fail trying to do it this way. So let's have a look at the second part of the research, which is about how to implement practice exams and how often and stuff like that. So there's this um, famous uh, study by Alan Marler in Estes, okay, 1969. And it's it, you'll, if you're in the educational scene, you'll hear it quoted quite often. So basically, it's a really extensive study, but let me break down the part that you need to know. So this first, these first two graphs represent their initial memory. In other words, they studied right now, and then they did the tests right now, okay? And these two over here represent in 24 hours time. So let's just look at the first part first. If When they studied and they did 10 training cycles and five exams, they scored 89% versus the group that did 10 training cycles and one exam, their initial score was 93%. So if you just read that in isolation, you'd think, oh wow, okay, well, you're better off doing more study in only one exam than five exams. But critically for you, this is the bit I really want to reinforce to you, even just after 24 hours, the people that had did 10 training cycles and five exams retained 88% of that 89%. In other words, they only had a memory loss of 1%. So doing the practice exams, the key takeout for you is this, doing the practice exams reinforces it into your memory. First, this group here 
who after the 10 trainings I was one exam, after 24 hours they only retained 81%. Now a lot of people go, well that's pretty good, you know, I can handle that. It's a loss of 13%, which, you know, 13 times the memory loss, okay? So it's not good at all. So the more practice exams you can do, the better. We know it's going to commit it to your long-term memory, okay? More training cycles equals higher scores was the other key takeout. So doing, say, five training sessions a day versus one is going to improve your scores. And then doing uh, five exams versus one is going to help you retain it better. So let's have a look at the second part of the research. When they're doing this research, they, they not only did the 10 and 5 and the 10 and 1 up here, they also broke it into um, 5 and 1 and 5 and 5. So 5 training cycles and 5 exams and 5 training cycles and 1 exam. And what they found was that if you did the 1 exam versus the 5 exams, you had 20% memory loss in 24 hours. And if you did five training exams and five exams, you only had 8% memory loss in 24 hours. So the conclusion from this study was that more tests, okay, equals less memory loss, right? 60% less memory loss at 24 hours. Okay, and if we go up here and we use the 10 and 5 and 10 and 1, it's even more. So guys, the key takeout from this for you is this. More practice exams equals less memory loss and more training cycles where you're going through this loop of practice exam study practice exam study practice exam study is going to make sure that you pass you score higher and then you have less memory loss okay so you need now the key takeouts that i want to summarize from these two studies for you is this use as many oh, first of all combine as many of these as possible all the time okay Use as many training and exam cycles as you possibly can in each day, in each week, and in each exam cycle. So also what you need to do is you need to compress your exam cycle. So you, need, you don't want to spend, say, four weeks studying for a RAL's radio exam. It's too long and you're going to leave gaps and you're going to have memory loss. What you want to do is compress that down to the shortest realistic time for you, which is probably, say, a week. Then what you want to do, always read important information out loud. If it's impractical because you're on the train or at work or you're in a meeting, studying on your practice exams on the phone or something, okay, mutter it. You move your lips and say it with your breath if you're on the train, etc. Because that, you've got to know this, when you convert something from what you're reading or thinking into speech or writing, you're going to remember way more, okay? Always draw, write, or summarize. Um, draw mini mind maps or scribble it. If you don't want to write it in full, just scribble the key points. That act, again, of transferring something from what you're thinking or reading or looking at onto pen and paper commits it to memory. Spend time looking at it as you do that. So if you're saying it out loud, saying it out loud, saying it out loud, look at it as you do it. Okay, combine as many of these as possible. Use repetition, repetition, repetition. So say things out loud, you know, three, four, five, seven, ten times, whatever. But use repetition. And use repetition when you're muttering, when you're saying it out loud, when you're looking, when you're scribbling. Okay? Now, how many times a day should you study? My recommendation is a minimum of five sessions per day. That might sound excessive to some people, but remember, more five sessions is better than four four is better than three three is better than one seven is better than five i say you should have a minimum of five sessions per day now um i don't have any scientific evidence to back that up but i do have anecdotal evidence to back now if you should be doing uh five sessions per day until your exam now you're going to reach a point where you go i know all this i can't keep doing all this so what you want to do is stay within that topic that exam section and broaden your knowledge so if for example in there i've got final preps and then i've got other exams you might start doing some of the other exams but say for example tonight you're going to do five sessions or today you're going to do five sessions make sure at least one or two of those exams stays on the final prep even if you think you know it just go through go through the motions 
we've got the random questions, we've got the random um, answer orders, so it's going to mix it up, and even just that fact that you're continually having to find it is going to reinforce it in your memory. Don't stray from the system that works, okay? Now, um, the practice examples, what you want to do is you want to go through this cycle here, okay? Oh, sorry, one other thing, topic, never go more than 24 hours, ever, 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 without revising and testing your final prep exam okay never ever just stick to that find the time I mean it's only going to take you if you know your stuff it's only going to take you 20 minutes just do it before you go to bed I don't care but don't go 24 hours ever without uh, doing your final prep exam now final sorry this is the cycle that you want to follow you want to go practice exam and then you want to use these combinations up here so you know go to the textbook go to the contents quickly find the section you're after um, you know get out your pen and paper scribble things and say them out loud or mutter look at them as you're doing it then go back to the pro the practice exam and just repeat that cycle over and over that's all you do and try and do this cycle preferably five times in 24 hours okay now if you do that if you follow that cycle, if you follow these steps and you use our final prep practice exams, I don't know how you can fail. Seriously, okay? So that's all you need to know, guys, to get through these exams, to make it easy to pass in half the time. Now, there is some more detail that you should go and look at in this five-day challenge if you haven't done it. I explain some of those concepts a little bit better. I show you examples of mind maps and things like that. So jump on over if you haven't. Then you can head to the site if you want to. Um, it's got all the practice exams there. You can join up here on the join now. Um, if you are a member, the how to study section there has um, the videos from the five day challenge or slightly longer ones from the five day challenge. So that's it guys. Um, I hope that's really, really helped. If it has, make sure you give me a like or a comment. Tell me what you particularly liked or what you got out of it. I need that feedback to be able to give, continue to give you and other students what you want. So that feedback is really, really important to me. Thanks for watching, guys. Matt from pilotpracticeexams.com, where you can pass in half the time.